Hey everybody, it's Jason with JR Custom Designs and Rotor Boss Rotor Attachments. Today we have the new Thunderbolt laser in our shop. We've had this thing for about two weeks and, and we've had a, almost a week to play around with it and kind of get used to it and see how it works. And uh, I felt I wanted to do kind of just a, a brief overview of the machine and my initial thoughts on the machine itself. So when I got this machine in um, out of all the machines that I've probably owned over the past eight to ten years, this machine um, actually got me really excited. Um, when they came out with it, it was almost perfect timing because we we're actually getting ready to do a mobile laser trailer, which I think this will be perfect for. Before I was going to use the Odin 32 or get another Odin 32. And then when this was coming out, I decided to hold off on that and go with this machine to put into my mobile engraving trailer. There's a couple reasons for that. Um, the main main one is it is rotary capable, uh, as you can see here, and we'll go into more more detail on it in the video in a little bit. But it is rotary ready. It's also very compact. Uh, the bed size is a 12 by 20. The machine itself weighs about 140, 150 pounds, and uh, it is all self-contained. Now, with this being an RF tube laser, it is uh, a lot more stable and easier to transport. So, having it in a trailer, I'm not going to be too concerned with, um, as well as the mechanics of everything is really solid and stout so I'm not I'm, I'm confident that I'm not going to have any issues if I do then we'll figure them out as we go but I felt this would be a perfect addition to that trailer along with the uh, Aurora fiber from Thunder as well now um, as you'll see in the video there are several features on here that are very um, I don't know that they're unique, but the way that they're utilized is very unique. So when I got this, uh, when I got this delivered to me, um, it was in a cardboard box. I was kind of skeptical about it, but once I opened it up and looked inside and saw all the packing and everything, um, it was very well packaged. Um, I was very excited to open it. Um, and I've had a lot of different machines over the years, um, but this is probably the first one that's ever really got me excited about opening them up. Even though, obviously, I've been excited about opening up my other lasers, um, just something about this laser and what it what it can do for the size that it is, um, I guess kind of made it a little bit more exciting to me or more appealing to me. So with this laser, um, everything is self-contained. It has a 30-watt RF2 in it. Uh, which is about the equivalent of a 50 to 60 watt glass tube CO2 laser. Um, it comes with a 1.5 inch head, which will allow you to get much better detail um, than a standard 2 inch. And with the, the space that you have here, which is 12 by 20, you got plenty of room to do your basic components and things that you would do. Um, on any other desktop laser. The benefit to this machine is that it is an RF2. Um, as a desktop model, I believe it's the only one out there that is an RF2 for a desktop, um, which means you don't have to have a separate chiller or anything like that to be able to um, control the temperature of the tube. It's all air cooled. You've got the vents on the back here, as well as some fans that blow the air on and off of the, the laser tube itself to keep it cool. It also has in the back, as you'll see later on, it has an air pump built into the, the back part of the machine here um, with no outside air inputs as of yet. I don't know if they're gonna do it in the future um, for those that wanna add it, but it would be a simple addition if you wanted to do it um, to the, to the machine so you can do it yourself uh, hope maybe eventually Thunder will make that part of the machine uh, we'll see I guess whatever is to come 
but also in the back, uh, which you'll see is the exhaust fan is attached to the back of the machine and tucked in under the machine so it's not sticking out or in the way. Runs off a regular 110 outlet, 15 amp. Uh, it's sufficient to run this machine and uh, it's ready to go right out of the box. Like I said, the laser is rotary capable and uh, Thunder asked us to, to make a rotary specifically for this laser. Uh, that way we can get the most out of it um, for the size that it is because we had to work within such tight um, space constraints. It made it a little, little bit more difficult. We had to kind of cut, cut down on some things, but all in all, um, the rotary itself for this machine is the, uh, the rotor bolt and it will be available exclusively through Thunder for this machine uh, when you purchase this here and as of the time of shooting this video the retail price for the machine for the laser is, was five thousand dollars and the rotary is six hundred dollars uh, combined fifty six hundred dollars you have a complete ready to use unit out of the box that can do pretty much anything um, with the rotary aspect of things you are limited to non-handled cups and things like that tumblers glasses uh, also the, um, the larger 40 ounces with the tabs I've had questions about those already uh, two things one I, I think it'll clear the bottom but with the one and a half inch head I think the issue is going to be the plunger is going to hit the the tabs that are sticking up out of the cup. So in that instance, not really going to work very well. Um, it's meant to be worked with your basic cups and mugs, or cups and tumblers and things of that nature. Alright, so with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, inside of the machine. We'll kind of show you around the uh, inside and outside of the laser and point out some uh, components and things like that from the laser. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to look at here is the new touchscreen control panel. Uh, I really like this panel. It has the basic functions, your X, Y, Z, and U all right there on the front, plus your start, stop, and pause. You also have the option to do it through the touchscreen, which I'm doing now. Um, you have the autofocus button. You have an origin button and a frame button, which makes it really nice. You don't have to flip through any menus or screens to get to it. All your other basic menu items are there for your your... IP config and all that, which makes it really nice to uh, control and, and handle everything. So here we have the autofocus function, kind of showing you what it does. Uh, this is a pretty neat feature to this. Once you set your origin over the center of the cup and you hit autofocus, the head will move over so the plunger actually hits the uh, origin point, does your autofocus, and then moves back out of the way. And then you're ready to go. Here's a different view, just kind of showing what it does. It auto focuses and it goes right back to the origin, so it's ready to start. Alright, we'll take a look under the hood now. Check this side out first. This is where all your stepper drivers, your controller, wire connections, and I believe it's a switching relay is in there. And if you look in the back, you have your USB hub for your camera and the USB port. Everything's nicely labeled, tucked out of the way, easy to get to, and easy for maintenance down the road. Standard drag chain for your wires on this side. Take a look at the electrical port. It's 110, 15 amp, then you got your ethernet, and then your PC USB cable, which looks to be a USB 3, which is nice. Um, then you have your fan built into the back of it. Your ducting on the left just comes out and runs to your exhaust port. We'll take a look here under where the laser tube is. You'll see on the left there you'll have your Ethernet uh, board and a couple other things. I'm not sure exactly what those that board is all for, but you have about three different power supplies there for the various components. Then we come to the 30 watt RF tube. Uh, air-cooled laser tube. Then you have the aperture 
the combiner for the red dot and the laser beam, and then your mirror number one. Then in this panel, I have your drag chain, your air tubing, all the stuff for your, your laser head. Then you have the main circuit breaker, the wire junctions, transformer, some relays, the Z motor, and your TL timer board that controls everything in the laser. In the back left, you have your air pump there. Then looking underneath, you have your standard four ball screw um, lift mechanism. For the bed, the bed is just a square frame. There is no knife blades. All you have is the honeycomb on top. Honeycomb is removable. Uh, and the crumb tray at the bottom slides out, so for easy cleaning. Then you have mirror number two. You have your air assist adjustment knob. Then there's your head with the 1.5 inch lens, yeah, your X motor, your Y motor is up in the front, you see the shaft running right there. Uh, this laser is rotary capable straight out of the box, so no need to worry about that. You'll be able to do everything at once. Alright, so here's your red and green status indicator like you would normally see. you got your camera which runs off the USB hub. Then you have your emergency stop and your on off key switch, and then the control board once again with the USB port built into it. And we have just a quick overlook of the machine. It's about 20 inches tall, uh, 27 inches deep, and I think it's 32 or 36 inches wide. So very small and compact for what you're getting out of this machine. Now let's take a look at the rotary. This is the rotor bolt. This is made specifically for this laser because of the comp constraints of the the size of the bed and everything, we had to come up with something that was functional and usable for for entry level user or just doing your basic stuff, cups and tumblers and things like that. You can fit up to a 30 ounce tumbler with no problems or equivalent 101 millimeters. You got your clamp, your heel plate, and all that still like you would expect from any other Rotoboss rotary and magnet feet to help hold it in place with mechanical adjustments up and down and left to right. Take a little closer look. So we've got your tower lift, mechanical adjustments with thumb screws. Um, then you have the clamp and heel plate to go with it to make sure everything's secured and tight in the machine. Again, this is a a lower cost unit so there are some bells and whistles that are not included in this that you'd find in the much bigger rotaries but this is still just as functional all right so now that we're taking a look at the laser itself um like i said i've had about a week to play around with this so i'm not too awfully familiar with it but i wanted to give my kind of first impressions and initial thoughts on the uh, laser itself so with the laser there are a few things that i would like to see different Maybe at some point they may be integrated. I know they tried to keep the cost down, give you as much bang for your buck as they could, and also keep the cost down to, to keep it kind of in that budget range. Okay, so some of the things that I'd like to see a little bit different, uh, as you've seen on the inside of the laser with the air assist um, being back here in the back on the rail, I would much prefer it to be up here in the front, kind of like it is on. The, the rest of the Novas and the Odin lasers themselves. But like I said, I'd rather have the air assist up here because I plan on putting an external port in the back to allow me to use outside air pressure 
instead of using the pump so in case I want to cut or something like that I have the air pressure to do so. So another thing that I'd like to see, personally I'd like to see a little bit different would be uh, a light control. Because right now the lights work when you turn the laser on and there's no way to turn them off. So having that would be nice. Again, it's not something that is necessarily required, but just some things that I noticed uh, looking through it that I would like to see different. Also, on the rotary side of things, the port for the rotary is dead center in the bed. So it's kind of in the way from where you would set the rotary, whether it be the rotary that comes with it or that it's made for it, or maybe a chuck or something like that that, that Thunder offers. It's just kind of in the way. I'd like to see it kind of tucked back in the corner, uh, just so when you plug it in, it's, it's not obstructing the use of the bed because the plug sticks out about two and a half, three inches. So it does kind of get in the way a little bit, but you can work around that. So it's not really that big of a deal. So other than those few things that, that I personally would change if I, if I had the choice, and, and several of them, or probably all of them, I will change myself uh, personally on the machine. Uh, but with all that said, those are just minor things and not even anything that would, would prevent you from doing what you need to do with this laser. I mean, out of the box, it's ready to go. It's just, for me, like convenience, things like that. But again, they tried to keep this in, in a budget range. Um, and in doing that, they had to cut back on some of the, the bells and whistles that you would normally see in some of their other lasers. So that's not really a fault to them. Um, but they're able to give you the most bang for your buck and give you as many features and uses as you as they can with with uh, within the constraints of what they're working with as far as cost and, and things like that. All right. So all that said, uh, for the for the entry level person looking to get into the laser business, uh, I think this is probably going to be your best bang for the buck because it's probably the only um, desktop laser that can do all the things that it does. It's the only one that I know of that has an RF2, and the only one that I know of that is uh, designed to be used with a rotary. So it basically gives you, covers all aspects of your laser engraving business. Even though you are kind of limited on the rotary stuff for now, um, it'll basically get your foot in the door and get you, you know, kind of going as, as far as the market and, and trying to take advantage of all the aspects of your laser business at a you know a fraction of the cost of what you pay for a much larger machine all right base so i hope this this video was helpful um kind of just did a brief overview of the machine there's a lot more to it and there will be a lot more videos coming out probably especially from thunder and and, and all them doing a bunch of tests and, and things like that to show you the capability of this machine i just personally wanted to give you a rundown of my thoughts initial impressions and kind of an overview as I understand it um, from the time that I've had to work with it. Um, I do plan on doing a follow-up to this in the future to kind of uh, show it more in use uh, because I haven't had a whole lot of time to do it. I didn't have time to videotape all the stuff that I did before because I was kind of on a time crunch, but I will have more videos come out about this and kind of the progress of putting this into the MOPA trailer so uh, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Um, but other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh, keep an eye out for any future videos we have coming on this or anything else that we have to offer. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.